Hey, Avi. That was a uh, very cogent uh, presentation of why, um, well, I guess in your first video, you presented why um, Paley's argument from design fails scientifically, and in part two, uh, you tried to explain why it fails philosophically. Um, now, I, I would say that, as I posted in, in, uh, in a comment in response to your first video, that um, because Kant has been left out of this picture, and, and what Kant said about uh, the organization of living systems, individual living systems, um, because that's been left out, um, it appears that Darwin and Paley um, are really in, in completely opposed camps, and in the sense that um, Darwin is considered a natural philosopher, while Paley is considered um, a theologian. Um, you know, Paley was doing natural theology, trying to explain nature in terms of uh, a, a Christian creator god. Um, there's obviously a difference between Darwin and Paley, but I would say that they're still bo both working from the paradigm of design. Um, it's just a matter of whether it's it's natural design or uh, divine design. Um, Kant is able to, to show how what you know the design of organisms is actually um, some uh, it's a result of something intrinsic to the organism itself. Um, Kant called this a, a natural purpose. So it's it's a, a telos a teleological principle that's um, not imposed from outside by a transcendent um, architect, but arises naturally from the self-organizing properties of the organism. Or, you know, self-organization isn't a property of an organism. It is what the organism is and is doing. It, organisms produce themselves, and they are composed of parts like machines, um, but unlike machines, these parts grow themselves and they participate with one another for the sake of the whole, the whole organism. You know, a, ma a machine's parts are interchangeable. You can replace them and, you know, a, a machine, a car can sit without a radiator as long as it's sitting forever. And when you put the radiator back in, you can turn it on and go. But an organism, you know, if you, if you take out a liver, uh, you, you're going to have to replace it pretty quick. Um, because it's a living process that's going on, and every component within an organism is constantly producing itself. And the organism as a whole gives rise to its own boundary. And, you know, every organism is constantly coping with an environment. And unless you understand this, this coping mechanism, um, teleologically, in the sense that it's not just a mechanism, but it's, it's organism... Um, Unless you understand it teleologically, then you, you can't explain it. And that was Kant's argument. Um, but, but really, Kant wasn't arguing that uh, we could say purposes are actually intrinsic to organisms in nature. What Kant was arguing is that, that human reason can't understand organisms uh, independent of this, of this teleological principle. So it was, a, it was a principle of our judgment for Kant not a metaphysical principle that actually applied to nature itself. Um, so while I think you know Kant's argument uh, about what organisms and, and what biology is in the biological world um, is really about puts into, into context the arguments of, of Paley and Darwin, um, I wouldn't argue for Kant's position, though, in, in, in my own final an analysis, I think we have to go beyond Kant and get rid of this dualism between the knowing human subject and the known natural object. Um, we've got to connect human cognition with the rest of biology, with the rest of the biosphere and the evolutionary process, which um, certainly goes back to the origin of life on Earth, but also to the origin of of matter, um, of heavier elements in, in this longer cosmological evolutionary process. Um, and one thing that we should give Darwin credit for is his recognition of the significance of deep time. You know, 
he uh, was very well read in, in the, the geological um, science uh, that had been done, um, and he knew that the Earth was very old. Um, you know, hundreds of millions of years, I think, is is what the best assumption was in Darwin's time. We know now it's you know the Earth is about four or four and a half billion years old, and that life is three to four billion, three and a half to four billion years old. Um, so that's a lot of time, and that means that species aren't essences; that actually species uh, arise and diversify from common ancestors, and there's a common descent. Uh, among species which are constantly transforming over time, so the category species is just an abstraction, really. Um, I mean, there are concrete reasons, you know, to separate what we call different species, of course, but they aren't fixed. They change over time. Um, and so certainly from, from Paley's perspective, and even from... Um, Aristotle's perspective, uh, there was no extinction. The organisms that are here now will always be here and, and have always uh, been here. Darwin showed us that that's just not true, but really um, Lamarck also recognized this um, a generation or two before Darwin. So um, I think what Darwin did, though, was offer us uh, a, a mechanism to explain uh, not all of biological diversity, but it's it's the minimal condition under which um, species will be able to change. The minimal condition is random variation under some sort of selective pressure, which, as you pointed out, there is... Um, scarcity in, in, in terms of the food and, and, and habitat um, that, that organisms must in, in some way compete with one another for. Um, and I, I wouldn't ever deny that. I just don't think that that sense of a description of the minimal conditions allowing for a change in species over time, I, I don't think that's explanatory um, of evolution. Because, you know, Darwin didn't even like to w use this word evolution, and I guess the meaning has sort of changed in, in a modern context, but not really, because etymologically, the word, the word evolution means to roll out, to roll out something in some way preformed. Um, so it's, it's the rolling out of a plan, almost, evolution. Um, and Darwin, of course, wanted to see evolution as unguided, and, you know, most neo-Darwinists uh, neo today also want to see it as unguided but they want to use this word evolution, and really, in any common uh, talk, even in scientific jargon, um, this process of natural selection and variation is described in terms of adaptation, and so a certain teleological principle is applied here. It's called teleonomy, and it's it's supposed to be that, you know, the scientists know they're applying teleolo teleology to nature in order to understand evolution, but it's just an artifact of our our human language. We, we're using metaphors. We don't actually mean it. We're just, you know, talking this way. And you know, I think that that's inadequate, because that's what that's implying is that human consciousness, human symbolic activity, is not natural. That that it can stand outside the world and represent it objectively as a mere mechanical process. I think if human beings can use a language that, that implies purpose, it's because that language arose in an, out of a natural process which was already in, in some way inherently purposeful. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not in the end uh, disagreeing with your, um, your disproof of, of Paley's argument from design. I'm just saying that ultimately Darwin almost remains within the same paradigm of design, the paradigm that says an organism is just a machine, and that once you start to consider um, what Kant points out, that the organization of a living being is quite different than the organization of an artifact, of a machine made by man. Um, once you notice these differences, it, it no longer you know, seems as though Darwin was 
um, the, the Newton of, of the blade of grass, as, as Kant would put it, the, the one who came along, who explained the biological world, um, as well as Newton explained the material world. Um, Darwin's theory is part of the picture, um, but it's not fully explanatory of evolution or of life. As I said, it's the m minimal conditions under which change can occur um, in species over time. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, definitely enjoyed your, your video, though, Avi. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can continue this discussion about evolution. Um, because, you know, I don't think either one of us pretend to be scientists, but biology is very philosophical at the end of the day. It's not as easy as, as measuring objective uh, material phenomena. Um, you have to live with, with a more dynamic, you have to try to understand a more dynamic process, you know, the living world, and that requires more abstract um, philosophical discussion, I would say. So, uh, yeah, let's see where it goes. Thanks for listening.